What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Today I'm gonna to show you a really cool tool that a man by the name of Renato Muscovic showed me when I was in high school. I took his metal shaping class. You may or may not know of him. He did water valete tooling for a while and he does some other metal shaping tooling. He's a, he's a really great uh, metal shaper. But anyway, what he was showing me and what I'm gonna show you today is how to make a tool to punch perfect circles so that you can fill holes in firewalls, in whatever you want, anything sheet metal. If you've got a tiny pinhole of rust that you wanna take out, you drill that hole and then you can fill it with a perfect disc. I don't know if, you, if you've ever done this before, you're holding on to a tiny piece of sheet metal and you're trying to file it or grind it into a circle so that you can plug a hole. That's what I'm trying to eliminate today with this little tool. So basically what you gotta do first is you buy yourself a transfer punch set. They're cheap. This one I think was 28 bucks. I got it from Princess Auto. If you're American, you go to Harbor Freight. It's just transfer punches. And what they are is they're all different size punches that are hardened. And uh, they are the same sizes as your drill index. So depending on what size you wanna punch out, that's the size transfer punch and drill bit that you're gonna use in the tool we are about to make. So this particular tool is very easy. All we're gonna do is take a scrap piece of whatever. I've, I've seen it done with aluminum. You don't have to use steel. Aluminum wears out a little bit faster, but depending on how often you're using it, it might not matter. Renato actually showed us with, uh, with aluminum. He had just some scrap block of aluminum. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna drill a hole straight through this all the way, just one single hole. It can be kind of near a corner or whatever. And then we're gonna cut through the side to allow a piece of sheet metal to slip in. And then there's that hole that goes straight through. We're gonna choose the appropriate punch. We're gonna take the tip of the punch off, make this a nice sharp edge so that this will actually punch out a perfect disc. That's what we're gonna do on Make It Custom right now, today, let's get to it. Okay, since this piece of uh, steel is a little bit messed up on the top, I'm just gonna grind it flat. Maybe I'll cheat a little bit, I'll just use the mill. Obviously, this step that I'm taking right now, it is not necessary for you guys to do. It's just because this has a really concave shape on my piece of scrap. So don't get scared if you don't have a mill because this is just me flexing my tool muscles. Okay, that's all we really need. I just needed a flat spot to drill. It's plenty. Hey, since we're on the mill anyway, we're gonna use the mill to drill our hole. You don't need a mill to do this, obviously. Just a regular drill press, even a hand drill and a vise, you'd be fine. But since we got it, we're gonna use it today. Love the smell of rapid tap. Okay, there's our hole. Fits through. The one thing that you might have to do is clearance this a little bit. If this is the exact same size as the hole perfectly, there isn't enough room for shearing to happen. We'll talk about it this way. On an iron worker or any kind of punch press that is made for punching holes in steel. The thicker the material you're going to punch, the more clearance you need between the punch and the female part of the hole. We might have to just sand this down a little bit to get it to start punching nicely, but that's basically it. We just drill a hole straight through and uh, it corresponds with our transfer punch. We're gonna grind the end of this off flat and sharp. So I'm just gonna use 80 grit on a three inch grinder. One thing you wanna do is make sure you don't wanna, God, that's leaky. You wanna keep this cool as we are grinding it, just a little bit at a, at a time because this is tempered. It's made to punch something so it's been hardened. So we just wanna grind, keep it cool with a rag, grind until we've got a nice sharp punch here.
Okay, edge is nice and sharp. Gotta make sure that when these transfer punches are made, I'm just gonna grab another one to show you comparison. There's a little bit of a bevel on the edge here. You gotta grind past that so that it's dead flat. Just like that. Okay, now this slips into our hole here. It's a little bit tight. I think what I'll do is, I'm just gonna spin this up on a drill. Try and not use the lathe, not everybody's got a lathe. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much there. And give it a little bit more clearance. Perfect. Next step is just to make a little slot so that the sheet metal can slip in there. So I'm just gonna do that with a grinder. Gonna deburr the edges a little bit. Well, there it is. We'll see if it works. Now that I sanded this, I'm just gonna run over it one more time to sharpen the edge in case the paper touched our nice sharp edge when we were sanding around it. I'm gonna grab a piece of sheet metal scrap here. All right, here we go. Slip your piece of sheet metal there. You might use a little bit of lubricant just to make sure that everything goes nice and smooth. So there could be a little bit more clearance because this thing is a little bit stuck, but it did exactly what I said it was gonna do. It just got a little bit stuck in the process. There's the punch hole. There's our piece itself. So now we've got these little perfect flat discs that we can weld in to fill firewalls, sheet metal, whatever. I'll show you what I was actually doing this for. There is a reason why I made that, and it's to come over here and look at the Model A. There's a few holes that I need to fill on this body. There's one, two, three, four. These are the holes that I'm gonna use this patch method on. So I'll just be able to drill those out to this exact size pop those in and I've got a perfect patch. Then you don't have to try and tack the hole shut and add a bunch of garbage you know, filler on there and you know, make a mess of it. You can just put that piece directly in the hole. You might as well drill that hole right now, actually. It's just about the perfect size. There we go. Perfect fit. You can TIG weld that in, you can MIG weld that in. I prefer TIG weld because I have access to the backside so I can hammer these nice. That's basically it. It's a huge time saver, you know? Like all these holes can be drilled to that size and then we've got the perfect patch. There's no messing around. Nice tight fit, easy to install. So I'll probably tune up that a little bit better, maybe take a little bit more off of the uh, off of the punch so that it doesn't get stuck in there. But that's it. I mean, hopefully you guys pick that one up because it's a really easy tool to make that's going to save you a ton of time. Like, how many times do you fill holes in sheet metal? If you're doing any of this kind of work, it's all the time. So here's a half inch plug. You can make it yourself on demand whenever you need it. You can fill whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and TIG weld these in and get this body figured out.
All right, so now that we got our little discs popped out, we want to fill these little holes. What I like to do is uh, I like to TIG weld them in. I like to use um, 035 or 045 filler wire. Basically what I do since um, our local place doesn't really stock stuff this thin is I just cut them out of my MIG welder. This is just 035 um, MIG wire. That's what I like to use for sheet metal. It's nice and, nice and tiny. You don't have to add a ton of filler since we're using such tight fitment on these little discs. One thing that uh, I don't really like doing is magnets kind of um, affect the arc of the TIG welder. So if I'm just tapping something in, I might be able to get away with it, but uh, otherwise it's kind of messy. I'm gonna give it a shot anyway, it's easier than, uh, than the other options. So I'm just gonna make the disc super tight on the one edge and see if I can get a fusion tack on there. So what I'm running for amperage is, uh, as a rule of thumb, when I'm TIG welding, I usually set my machine somewhere in around one amp per thou for sheet metal or, uh, or steel. So if, if this is, you know, 060 or 0, uh, 065 sheet metal, which it's not, I think it's actually a little bit smaller than that. Um, maybe it's 050, I'm around 50 thou, or 50 thousandths of an inch is maybe 50 amps. Um, and then I throttle it with my foot. I'm gonna set the welder to about 50 amps, right there. Got my little steel wire. I'm gonna try and fusion tack it first and just see if we can get a nice fusion tack. Yep, I got one. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just give that a tap with the hammer and the trolley, trying to flush it out a little bit. Most important thing when you're fitting anything for TIG welding or any kind of welding is that it's nice and flat. Like you want it to be exactly where it's going to be. If it's installed a little bit crooked, It'll be much harder for it to be flat. Now I've got some interior braces back here that are making it a bit difficult for me. Feels nice and flat. We did get a couple of little spots of porosity in there, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So I just welded that all the way around. It's gonna wanna contract a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll just, uh, we'll give it a, a couple of hits with the hammer, try and expand that weld back out. I'm gonna knock off any high spots first here. There it is. She's gone. There's a tiny little pinhole there. Right there. I'm gonna just hit that. Try and get rid of it. On to the next. Thanks everybody for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to check out metalreborn.com for our new upcoming premiere of the Metal Reborn documentary. 
just for you guys because you've been asking about it and not everybody's local, not everybody can come to our premiere at the drive-in and watch, you know, American Graffiti and stuff. We have an online way so that you guys can watch the premiere on September 29th with the rest of us. I haven't seen the final cut version. Nobody has seen this locally. The only people that have seen it are in London at the International Motorsport Film Awards from a couple of days ago. So this was an award nominated documentary for the International Motorsport Film Award. And on September 29th, if you go to metalreborn.com, you can watch it too online premiere at 8 p.m. So thanks everybody for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to check that out. Like, subscribe, click notifications. We're here twice a week. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.